Hi, I'm Troy Ockeltree. I'm a plant ecophysiologist at Colorado State University, and I'm going to walk you through one of the methods we use to measure leaf hydraulic conductance. In order to generate our leaf vulnerability curves, we like to measure the hydraulic conductance of about 30 leaves that are at a range of leaf water potentials. So I'm first going to show you how we generate those different leaf water potentials. And the way we do it is by first rehydrating a whole bunch of leaves so they get fully hydrated. Then we dry them on the lab bench or a box fan for different lengths of time and that generates different leaf water potentials. So what I'm going to do first is um, I'm going to pretend that we're in the field and that this grass is actually growing um, in, the, in the ground and not this pot and show you how I would sample it from the field and then bring it back to the lab to start the rehydration process. When I'm in the field and sampling a grass or a forb, what I like to do is not only remove kind of the stem here, but I want to remove part of the root system as well. And then as soon as I remove it, I'm going to put it in a plastic baggie or some reservoir with a little bit of water to start that rehydration process right away. So I would just dig down in here a little bit. This doesn't work very well because it's potting soil and not actual field soil. But I would try to get down there and remove the stem with a little bit of the root system and then I'll put it into the water. Then I would take this back to the lab and I'll show you the next step. All right, now that we've, we've got our sample back to the lab, what I'm going to do is recut this stem and quickly put it into um, like a vial. I like to use these vials of water and then I'll let that rehydrate it overnight. So I'll typically have a, a petri dish or some shallow reservoir of water. And then I'm going to take my sample out of this bag. I'm going to put the base of this stem underwater and I'm going to recut it underwater so that the water column in the plant uh, remains intact when I cut it and then the xylem doesn't get filled with air. So I just cut it real quick and then quickly move it over to my vial of water. Then once your plants um, are in these vials of water, I would cover this with a plastic bag or some a bucket potentially, and that will help um, keep the humidity around the plant fairly high to minimize any evaporation from the, the leaf surface. It also keeps it dark so that it wouldn't, um, won't have any stomates open, and that helps promote um, rehydration. All right, so I have a few tillers here in my vial of water and I've let them sit overnight to rehydrate. So they should be about as hydrated as they're going to get. So now what I want to do is start drying them down so I can get them at different leaf water potentials to start developing my vulnerability curve. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull these tillers out. And I've got three separate ones. And I'm just going to leave them on a bench for different amounts of time. And then I'll sample each one um, and measure hydraulic conductance on each one. And I'll show you that in just a second. Before I actually show you how to measure leaf hydraulic conductance, this is a good time to talk about one of the limitations of this method and one of the assumptions we have to make. If you remember back to the equation I showed you for estimating leaf hydraulic conductance with this method, you'll remember that there's a leaf water potential pre and post rehydration. Well, you can't make those two measurements on the same leaf. And so what we have to do is actually measure the pre-water potential on a different leaf than the post. So for example, I might cut this leaf and measure the water potential on it pre-rehydration. Then I would cut this leaf, allow it to rehydrate, and measure leaf water potential on it post-rehydration. And so I'm making the assumption that the leaf water potentials um, prior to rehydration are the same in these two leaves and that the hydraulic conductance would be about the same. So in order to kind of maximize the chances of this assumption being true, what we do is before we actually measure right rehydraulic conductance, but after we've allowed it to dry on the bench, we'll place this entire tiller inside this plastic bag. And then I'm going to blow some air into it to help increase the humidity and minimize any evaporation from this leaf. Now I'm going to let this sit for about 15 minutes to allow any differences between leaf water potentials to equilibrate and again maximize the chances that our assumptions are true about these leaves being all at the same leaf water potential. 
All right, so now we'll go ahead and get started with the measurements. So again, here's my tiller um, with some different leaves on it. And so we can select two of these leaves. So I like to try to select two leaves that are close together on the tiller and are of similar size just to maximize the chance that they're going to be similar in leaf water potentials. So remember, we need a pre-water potential before rehydration. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this leaf here. And then I'll quickly take it over to the bench, bench and measure leaf water potential. While our leaf is equilibrating inside that plastic bag, I'll just walk you through the equipment we use to make this measurement. You can see that there's not a lot of specialized equipment to make these measurements, so this is a nice method to use in kind of any lab or field setting that you might be working in. The first thing I have is this reservoir of water in a petri dish. I like to use a petri dish because it's fairly shallow and it's easier to cut my leaves in. I've got degassed, deionized water that's been filtered to 0.2 microns, and that's just so no air bubbles or particulates clog the vessel elements during our hydraulic conductance measurements. Now, in addition to the water in the petri dish, I have a larger flask here filled with the same water because between measurements, I like to put fresh water in here so it's always clean water. I like to have a bunch of razor blades on hand because I always want to use a sharp razor blade when cutting our, um, my leaves. And then I use these rubber pads to make um, some of my cuts on, and I'll show you how you, I use those in a little bit. Um, then I've just got some towels here because inevitably I will spill water and everything will get really wet. Then the last piece of the equipment here that's important is I've got this light source here. So this is just a halogen work light from Home Depot that I purchased. Then I built this wooden stand to hold this glass casserole dish that's filled with water. And this just acts as a heat sink, or um, yeah, sorry, a heat sink so that the heat from the halogen lamp doesn't heat up the leaf or anything else I'm doing down here too much. I just want to point out that the light source is important because some species are sensitive to light intensity. So what we do is we just standardize the light intensity of all of our measurements so we just minimize the potential effect of light intensity on our, our measurements. Okay, now that our leaf has um, hopefully equilibrated inside the plastic bag, we're going to go ahead and start our measurements. So I'm going to pull the tiller out here. And remember, we need a leaf water potential prior to rehydration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two leaves that are um, close together and of similar size. So I'll start with these two. I'm going to measure leaf water potential of this leaf prior to rehydration. So we'll go ahead and do that one first. I'm going to cut it with a razor blade at the base. I'll take this over to the other bench and measure leaf water potential. Now we have a leaf water potential prior to rehydration. Now we need to rehydrate a leaf. So I'm going to select this leaf here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the base of it underwater and cut it while it's underwater. And then that will allow it to rehydrate from the cut portion. I don't want to submerge the whole leaf because it potentially could rehydrate from other um, points along the leaf besides the cut portion. Um, now also you need to monitor the time that you allow it to rehydrate. So I'm going to allow this one to rehydrate for 30 seconds and you need to make that exact. So make sure you have a timer handy. So I'm going to hold the base of this leaf underwater, cut it real quickly with the razor blade and keep the cut end underneath the water. While holding that base underwater, I'm going to go ahead and put one of these uh, rubber pads behind it because when it's done rehydrating, I'm going to make another cut above the water surface and that's how we're going to measure leaf water potential on this rehydrated leaf. So make sure you've got a nice dry razor blade. I'm going to pretend we're um, at 30 seconds exactly, so I'm going to recut this leaf. Now I'm going to go over to our pressure chamber and measure leaf water potential on this rehydrated leaf. Now that you have measurements of leaf water potential before and after rehydration, and you know how long you let that leaf rehydrate, you can now estimate leaf hydraulic conductance by using those variables along with the capacitance that you've estimated from your pressure volume curves. Now before you start move using this method, um, I'm going to put a slide up in just a second and talk through a couple of considerations that you need to think about before starting this method. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about a couple of things to consider before you start using this method. The first is degassing the water, which I mentioned um, that we use degas and filter deionized water. So there's two general ways you could degas your water. One is with a vacuum pump, and so here's kind of a picture of the setup that we would use for that. 
And another way that you can do it that's a little simpler is if you boil the water for about 10 or 15 minutes and then take that water off of the um, hot plate, cap it with a rubber stopper and let it sit overnight, this process will also degas the water um, and you'll be ready to go in the morning. Another consideration is how you're going to filter the water. The way we do this is by using this inline filter. We just purchased this housing um, and the actual filter that's inside from McMaster Car. So if you go to Ms. McMaster Car's website and look for uh, water filtering equipment, you can find something that will work for you. Another thing to think about as you're starting these measurements is that you don't want to rehydrate your leaves for too long. So there's a maximum amount of rehydration that's going to occur in your leaves. And if the leaves reach that maximum rehydration prior to you ending your measurement, you're going to underestimate leaf hydraulic conductance. Something else to note that can be helpful in just planning your measurements is that once you have leaf capacitance and you have a general idea of what your leaf hydraulic conductance is going to be, you can start to estimate how much time you're going to need to allow leaves to rehydrate at different leaf water potentials. And if you go back and look at that equation I gave you earlier in the video, you can kind of see how to start to make those types of decisions. Finally, it's important to note that the reduction in leaf hydraulic conductance that occurs as leaves dry out can be the result of different factors. So one of the places that can cause a decline in conductance is the embolism formation in the vasculature. But Leaf hydraulic conductance can also decline due to reductions in the conductance outside of the xylem or in the mesophyll. The method that I've shown you here, this rehydration kinetics method, is biased towards measuring the change in conductance that occurs in the vasculature and is less sensitive to any changes that might occur in the mesophyll. So this is just important to note and keep in mind as you're interpreting your data.